Hello, thank you very much. My name is Dr. Rick Lossanti, um, part of the MRC unit in Glasgow. Uh, this is a model of a patient flow through an AE hospital uh, department. This was done by an idea from Dr. Robin Muller. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I picked up on this because this is the absolutely perfect example of, to demonstrate to you what an agent based model is. And that's my main reason for being here, is to introduce people to agent based models. Um, one of the things with optimizing flow through systems like um, a &E department, there's lots of software enabled to do that. There's some standard mathematical methods that you can use to do that. But they're quite abstruse. They're quite hard to get your head around. What you'd really like to do is experiment on how to do that. You'd like to change things. But that's perhaps not very advisable in a fast moving um, accident and emergency department. So what I've created here is what's known as an agent based model which you can think of like a self-playing computer game uh, that is based around people in an a, a department. Now, I have no real medical background, so I'm going to use really tough technical terms like A and B and C. And I'm determining that our agents are two types. There's a patient who has a set of symptoms and requirements. Symptom A, you have to have something A, and then you've got to have something B to them, and then you've got to have something C to them, so you can think of it like triage or something like, you know, uh, doing an x-ray for a fracture and then having something to do it. And then you've got a set of care, what I'm calling caregivers. So that's somebody who can give you those things that you want to do. Right. So I need to go to triage. I need to get my x-ray. I need to have my bone set. Each of those things are going to have a set amount of time that you can do that. And so what your patient does, your patient sits there in the queue, and when one of your caregivers is available, it then goes to them. And it's as simple as that. This is a very, very simple model to show that you can possibly make it more complicated and make it fit the things you're doing. This is done in an agent-based in integrated development environment called NetLogo. This is a wonderfully simple way of programming agent-based models. It does graphics for you, and it's an amazing amount of support for it. I would really highly recommend anybody that's interested in trying anything to do with agent-based models like that to go and have a look at NetLogo. And it's very obvious. Just type NetLogo. It's absolutely potential stuff here. So, let's have a look at the model. Let's see if this works. Oh, lovely. Right, so this was written in NetLogo. It's done with the method that we said. One of the nice things about NetLogo is you can save it down not only as a NetLogo file, but also as an active HTML document. And this is sitting on the, my um, uh, GitHub page, and it's an actual HTML, and it's all with JavaScript behind it, the, the NetLogo runs. So what we've got here is we set up. Here's our patient and these are the colours here, and there's the caregiver. So in this situation, we've got two of A, which you can see by this colour here, two of, and one of B, and what would happen is you run it, or go, and people will go to those ones because they're free. Yeah? Those things will take a particular amount of time. In this, one, in this case, we've got a time of five before it would do that. So if we now run them, you can see it's a move from one place to another, and then when they go to the top, that's them leaving the A and E department. And what we can see here, this is really easy to knock this up in about yesterday to do that. We can see sort of number of patients in the queue and you know, sort of average wait times. And in this one, all the patients have the same requirements, but it's quite easy to change them. Okay. And then you can do little experiments. You can say, OK, let's not do that. Let's say that we only have one of, say, triage. How much difference does that make? Set the thing up. And then it's again, you can see in terms of times going up quicker. It's the, the people in the queue and stuff like that. So it enables you to do like, stuff like this. So what does this look like? Here's the basic, here's the, in this thing you can actually code it within this environment. So if you want to change this, this is, the, this is what NetLogo code looks like. Very easy to change. And write stuff like that. Okay, so can we go back to this? We can, good. So. Here's, what we're, here's all I'm doing with my patients. My patient has a particular shape. Here's its set of requirements, A, B, and C, but it's also got a set requirement, A, particular state, and where you're putting it. And it counts the time in and time out. Here's the caregiver agent, and what that's doing, it's got a particular time it's doing, and then it's got its uh, patient that it's actually working on. So it's really nice and simple code, and we can make this much more complicated. So, Quick indulgence of this, this is my reference for being here, these are the people who I work with, this is Phase, this is out of the MRC unit in uh, Public Health in, in Glasgow. 
If you're interested in ABMs at all, please go and look up phasenetwork.org. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Any questions? Yes, any questions? Yes. So, how, how easy is it? It's so kind of, you said we could add in lots of other yes. criteria. Yes. So, how easy is it to make it complex and how rapidly would it become too complex in terms of number of factors and things like that? Right. One way you could easily do it is well, obviously, what you can do is put more caregivers in. And because I was using a string thing, using the technical terms A, B, C, and D, you can make that string as a requirement if they want to do that as long as you'd like. You could easily put in there things to sort of make which patients have bit particular things more random. You could put, easily put things in there that would say, okay, let's say one of your caregivers stops caregiving at a particular time. You can make this incredibly complex if you want to. And it'll not break it. And it will not break it. Mm -hmm. so it's it's a bit scalable. In terms of that complexity, the kind of the ability, because you mentioned triage as well. Yes. The ability to have patients of different complexity and, yes. and different urgency. Yes. But, yeah, at the moment I'm just picking them yeah, based yeah. just randomly. Yeah. But you could put a you could put a, a thing that picks. You, you can make incredibly complex models very and, and that are very transparent in that logo. We write some very very big models, in. but yeah, it, the the main problem is making sure that your model you've got in your head is right and it goes down there. But writing the code and doing that is is quite simple. Coming up with a really good idea is difficult. Any Liam? So you said you know, I said there's other patient flow. Models. Yes. So what's the advantage of your proposition of what's out there? <coughs> right, this is, uh, we, we've had this conversation, well this is people just trying stuff out to understand your department. You wouldn't use this in a clinical section, you wouldn't use this to plan exactly what you're doing. But what you'd want to do is let's try, let's have a see how our system behaves, let's put some rules in, let's play with it without actually having to use anybody. And that's what engine-based models are about, it allows you to play with systems, understand how they work. Then when you're happy with them, yeah, go away, put them into the linear um, optimization model and get the full flow through it. Yeah, this is this is for play in its in its proper term play. So do most of the proprietary patient flow <coughs> models not have are they not agents agent based models? Oh, we don't know. You don't know. That's fair enough. <laughs> That's fair enough. Not my area. This guy said, can you do an agent based model of this thing? Yes I can. So That's pretty not my not my area at all. Okay. But any any other judge questions and judges? No? Sorry. examples where um, our intuitions about something have been proven wrong because you've done agent based Oh, models. yes, classic. It's showing segregation model. Go ahead and look at it. Really simple. Just basically how you, you look at the way that people determine what area they should live based on their prejudices. And it comes up some incredibly interesting stuff. It's emergent behaviour. You had a question? Yes. Yeah, so, agent based modelling, is it going to have to be visible entities? So, for example, if I was comparing one. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Um, a more complicated one would have them not just jumping in from one place, but you can give them a path to do so. Um, Hesok, who's not here, has done a very, very, sim done a very similar guy who came with us, did a very similar one looking at that, at, at what effect it had for passing on mirrors between people in, in different A&E departments. Yeah, you can do that. Got one here. Hmm? That was three minutes. Um, I'll take one more question from the back. Yeah. Guess everything. Yes. yes. So, in, if you wanted to use this in real life, I'm guessing you'd want to inform the parameters more carefully related to real life. How would you go about doing that? Um, I, you know, for, for the A&E department thing, I've got no idea, right? Because I don't work in the A&E department. But, for, but if you'd be looking at particular, you'd look at individuals and what they do. So, in this case, how long would it take for somebody to actually do something in terms of relative time? So, you would do that in terms of you would look at the inputs and you would be measuring each of those. Yeah, exactly. Like these have got set. These, are, yeah, these have got set criteria that I just made up in terms of so the sliders that were on there and how long something takes. You get whatever real information you. You can. There are many methodologies for for parameter fitting with agent-based models. But there's a large literature out there to do that. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank okay. you for Good luck to everybody else. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for organising again. Thank you. I really appreciate it.